If Google Fiber were on a dating app, we'd show all the angles. Here's our one gig internet at $70 a month. Here it is again. Also here, still. Okay, let's try this for the second time. From the outside, this will seem like the last laptop you ever want to pick up. But there's a few key reasons why you would actually want to choose the Dell Latitude E6230 as your next laptop or something similar to it. Let's start with the outside. Mine is a refurbished model, by the way, so please excuse the uh, wear and tear you'll see in my little close-up screens. Uh, we'll get back to exactly why it's refurbished in just a little bit. The laptop is not the lightest or thinnest by any means, but it's just under one inch and a little over three pounds, which makes it still travel friendly, and that's with the battery and SSD installed. The aluminum lid has a brushed uh, cover over it, which feels pretty nice, but the overall look of the laptop screams for work, not play, which is actually pretty important. Taking a look at the size, we have a 34 millimeter express card port, which I've never used. We have two USB 3.0 ports, and of course an HDMI port. On the back, we have a LAN port, and we also have a 65 watt hour battery. You can upgrade this to a 97 watt hour battery or lower this to a 58 watt hour battery. And next to it is a Kensington lock and of course a charging port. On the other side, we have a VGA port. We also have an eSATA port, which is something you don't see too commonly, but that eSATA port doubles as a USB 2.0 slot, which is pretty nice. And of course, uh, further down, we have a smart card port, which is busted, a la the refurbished part going on there. And beneath that is an SD card slot. On an even worse note here, if you guys look back at that uh, smart card and SD card slot, they're in some terrible positionings. I don't know what Dell was thinking when they put these slots like that. You literally have to tilt the laptop up on its side in order to access those slots, especially if you're trying to access the SD card slot. When it comes to the performance, I gotta start with the first two things you're gonna see when you open up this laptop. That's the keyboard and the display. When it comes down to the keyboard, at first, I really didn't like it because one, this is my very first laptop. So I had to really get kind of get used to the keys being so close. I was making a bunch of errors. I was getting kind of frustrated. But within a short amount of time, just a day or so, I was typing faster than I would actually type on a, my desktop keyboard. And not, I even go to first to say I really, really like the uh, keyboard on the Dell Latitude. It's really awesome. I actually would prefer having that type of keyboard on my desktop. I'm kind of in the market trying to look for one right now. The display is 12 and a half inches with a resolution of 1366 by 768, which Dell calls HD. I sure as heck don't. But yeah, it also has anti-glare technology built in, uh, which doesn't mean that much for me because I don't really work outside with this laptop. But I'm pretty sure for a lot of you, that's gonna be really important. Overall, the display does work really well. I have no problem seeing my code and my tons of text that I look at through my Notepad++, which is what I'm doing most of the day as a developer. And of course, bouncing from screen to screen. I do watch some YouTube from time to time. I don't really play any games on the laptop, but uh, yeah, the display does work quite well for what it is. And also the hinges on the display are, are pretty good as well. When I'm in an office, when I'm in the office, I'm actually hooking this laptop up to a multi-monitor uh, setup where I have two monitors, one going into the HDMI, one going into the VGA. And this actually works well. I, I'm kind of bummed out by the fact that once you put two external monitors into this laptop, you lose the laptop display. So you can't have a three screen setup. That kind of sucks, but the ha be actually able to do that with a laptop at this price point, this laptop is actually less than $300. We're gonna come back to that. But to be able to do, have to do that at this price point is pretty good and is exactly what I needed for my office uh, type setup and to get my work done. Of course, uh, I can't forget about the webcam. Uh, that's This is how this looks. It's bad. And before we dig into the performance of this laptop, let's also uh, take a little bit of time to flip it over and just take a look at the guts, which Dell made extremely easy because there's only one screw you have to undo and you can just pop the lid right off. Thank you, Dell. That's, I really do enjoy that. Once we pop the lid off, the first thing we're presented with is, well, the main thing that most of you guys are going to touch, and that is the memory. The memory can take two, four, or eight gig DIMM modules. Of course, I filled it up to the max and put two eight gig DIMMs in there for a total of 16 gigs. You can have that uh, in the speeds of DDR 1600 megahertz. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't 
I don't know if they actually have a laptop. Maybe that's faster than that. But I'm probably, I'm pretty sure they do. And further down, there is the speakers, which actually get uh, decently loud. And next to that is the SSD, which houses a 128 gig SSD. The write and read speeds are around 300 megabytes per second. And that is actually not bad as far as the speed is concerned, but the space is definitely an issue for me. So later on, I will definitely be swapping out this SSD. Further up, you have the fan that cools the laptop and it does get audible when under low, but not too terribly loud, which is great. And of course, next to that is the CPU, which is an Intel i5-3320M, which also houses the graphics, which is the Intel HD 4000. And next to that is the wireless, which is an Intel Centrino wireless end card. I believe the model is a 6250 or something like that. And of course, Dell gives you an extra two PCI Express ports to do whatever the heck you want to do with. But I, I really wouldn't know what you would do with uh, with those ports. Once again, and at this day and age, if those PCI Express ports don't aren't big enough or don't give you enough room to house an M SATA drive or an M2 drive, th there's nothing much you can put in there besides a wireless card. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention it. The laptop also has Bluetooth 4.0 but I couldn't get any of my Bluetooth headphone devices to actually work with the laptop, which is kind of weird. I'm not exactly sure if that's a Windows 7 situation or if it's a situation with the laptop itself. Now getting into the, the Windows here, you have Windows 7 Professional on this laptop. You can also run Linux and Ubuntu hours out of it without You need great marketing videos to grow your business. With promo, you can create commercial level videos in minutes. Choose from over 12 million quality videos. But the value is screaming at you. Will it be good enough for your flexible PC needs? Let's find out. This then is the Dell Latitude E6230. They are widely available refurbished from $200 to $450. They mostly use the Intel Core i5-3320M CPU rated up to 2.6 GHz, the integrated Intel HD 3000 GPU, 4 GB of DDR3 RAM, and a 500 GB 5400 RPM hard drive. These guts sit underneath a 12.5 inch 720p matte LCD screen. Some physical deformations with a couple bumps, but it gets louder and more clear than most of the 15 inch notebooks I've reviewed, and thanks to the 5400. For a long time, the left, or at least the center, has had sort of a monopoly on political comedy with shows like uh, The Daily Report and The Colbert Report, the late night shows, and all of that. But that has now changed with the introduction of Gret Gret. Greg Gutfeld's new show, Gutfeld. Sorry, Gutfeld, because it's got an exclamation point at the end of it for some reason. Anyway, I read on Fox that it's here to scare the people who love to scare you, and that he's going to cancel cancel culture, which I'm sure is intended to be a joke, but it's actually a great commentary on the fact that they cancel just as much as the left does. Anyway, um, announcing the show, he says it's a talk show on a cable news network, and it's run by somebody who is not a typical newscaster. I'm not like any of the competing hosts, I'm not a comedian. And we have fact checked that and it has borne out. <laughs> because we wanna show you a bit of the first show, which just happened yesterday. And I will say, comedy is hard. That will be the intro for this first video. <laughs> you all made a great choice. For proof over at MSNBC, let's see what Brian Williams is up to right now. 
Good evening, I'm Brian Williams, and I am on Mars. Yes, I jumped on a chopper, and now I'm on Mars. I've been here for a year now. I built a castle here made of mastodon carcasses and marshmallows. This is where I invented all the COVID vaccines, as well as penicillin, the smartphone, and fluffernutter. <laughs> Some things never change. Did you know that the average adult has 5 to 20 pounds of toxic poop in their body at any given moment? It seems I counted two jokes about marshmallows in that segment, which was Ida, a reference to the Brian Williams scandal from 2015. It was just a random reference to something that happened six years ago. You know what's funny is that Brian Williams is trending and not gut filled. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he did his job. He's just putting them back in the news, I guess. No, but it's people tweeting about how it wasn't funny. So that's why it's like they were like, it's not even funny. You know, listen, I listened to the whole monologue and I thought that it was very interesting to hear this centrist take. I'm here to take down the corporations, I'm here to take down everybody, which is a popular take right now. Oh, I guess I'm a socialist because I'm doing this and I'm doing that. It's just another white guy exercising his privilege, being unfunny and talking about what funny is, telling people what funny is. Another straight white guy just doing that dumb stuff that they do. Listen, I know some racist comics who are really funny. But mm -hmm. he, when I see these conservative comics who take this conservative take, a lot of them are not funny. And I'm not just saying that, I'm putting myself you know, on the line right now by publicly saying this as a comedian. Because now people are going to scrutinize my comedy and I know how this thing works. It but can stand up it to didn't it. Make, huh? Your comedy can stand up there, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, it didn't make me laugh. Did it make you laugh? Like, I, I just want hydration from crying too much. <laughs> Fallon, that guy fawns more than a herd of deer. And I heard Seth Meyers and Trevor Noah ran off to be obscure together. <laughs> so let him be. They got the market cornered in calling Americans stupid. To them, it was never about Trump, it's Trump voters. It's not about guns, but gun owners. It's not just about destroying statues, it's anyone who thinks math is real.